It's hot. It's really hot. It's like 120 degrees out today. I tell you what, burning up in here. It's so hot. I had to start a fire over there just to cool off. It's so hot. I changed my pockets. Melting. Anyway, enough with the jokes. Okay, what are we doing today? I had a lot of people ask me, Jeff, can you tell me the difference between iron pyrite and gold? Yes, I can. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna do a special just on iron pyrite. Now, for a lot of you people out there that don't know what iron pyrite is, it's fool's gold. And there's some right there. It's locked up in the host rock, you see that? Now, iron pyrite is a sulfide of iron. You got other sulfides like galena, which is a sulfide of lead. But this, this is what we're looking at. Now, what I'm gonna do is today, I'm gonna show you how to tell the difference between this, which ain't worth nothing, and the real deal, which is gold. So come on, let's go. Okay, so how do you know the difference between the two? Well, without getting into too much of an explanation, I'm gonna tell you. Now, gold is super soft, and iron pyrite's really brittle. On most tests, it registers at a six to 6.5 as far as brittle, and gold is two to 2.5, if you guys know anything about geology. Now. I got a whole bunch of iron pyrite in the pan here, and I got a piece of gold here. Now come here, take a look at this. I'm gonna get my jeweler's loop out, so you can take a look at this good looking gold here. Ooh, look at that. See how buttery that is? That's the real deal right there. That's gold. You see that? See how that's all flaky? That's pyrite. You can see the big old difference right there. See all that? See how that's all flaky? And it's kind of got a brassy look to it. That ain't no gold. And when you go to chip on it, it's gonna come right off, flake off in your hand. See all that? That ain't gold. See how brassy that is? Now gold has been known to travel with pyrite. So it'd be worth to crush it all up, make sure there's no gold in there. Oh, ain't that the prettiest thing you ever saw? Okay, so what you can do is you can get yourself a pocket knife or a hammer. I like a hammer because it never lies. And so what you're going to do is you're going to get yourself what you think is a piece of gold. And you're going to put it down here on something hard. Now come here and take a look at this. I got a piece of pyrite and I got a piece of gold. You see that? Woo, look at that gold. Ain't it pretty? Now look what happens to the iron pyrite. When I hit it, see it broke into a million pieces. The gold, nothing. It just keeps getting flattered, flattered. I'll show it to you again in case you missed it. I got a whole bunch of iron pyrite just waiting to be crushed. Look at that, it's hammer time. All right, see that? It looks like gold, but it ain't. But I'll tell you what, you lightly tap that and it shatters because it's so brittle. But that gold, I can pound on it all day long. It just gets thinner and thinner, see that? And that's gold! Yeah, okay. Now, gold comes in an assortment of colors, but the only ones you have to really worry about is the three basics. You got red, which means copper's in there. You got white, which means the silver's in there. They call that electrum. And then, of course, that nice buttery gold that's pure that comes from California, Australia. Now, of course, there's other colors out there, and I'll leave a link down below so you can take a look for some of you people who are curious about that. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's short little episode on determining what makes gold different from pyrite. And if you like today's episode, please rate, share, and subscribe. And as always, leave me a comment because I really like to know what you think about all this. So anyway, until next time, this is Jeff Williams with AskJeffWilliams.com saying if you want to know if it's gold, it's a really simple matter. Gold's gonna bend and pirates gonna shatter. Take care, everybody.